So you are all set to work on a Waksha engine that uses the ESM or ESM2 control system. You do know how to tell the difference between the six versions, right? Well, even if you're pretty sure you can tell the differences, this video provides a quick guide to help identify the control system your engine is running on currently, so you can find the correct manuals and references in order to keep your engine running its best. First things first. Don't rely on the engine tag. Over the years of an engine's life, it could have been updated to achieve the current emissions, uptime, or diagnostic requirements. Just because that engine tag says it's a GSI or a GL does not mean that the current running configuration matches. Experience tells us that when an on-site configuration changes, the serial tag is rarely updated. So let me repeat that one more time. Don't rely on the engine tag when you're trying to identify the model information for what fuel system and control system the engine is running. In order to separate ESM, often referred to as ESM1, from the more recent ESM2 control system, we start by finding the ECU or the engine control unit. On ESM-based engines, the ECU is a larger white rectangle located along the center line of the crankshaft, normally towards the front of the engine. ESM2 is a smaller black rectangular box, also along the crankshaft center line, but often it is more towards the middle of the engine. The ESM control systems have gone through six versions since the first ESM system was offered on engines produced in 2001. This first generation used sensors to protect the engine from exceeding safe operating conditions as it relates to speed, temperature, pressure, and the combustion process. ESM engines can be identified by the Large Power Distribution Box, or PDB, along with several harnesses that feature color-coded wire ties as well as a decal with those matching colors. It uses the ignition power module with diagnostics, or IPMD, spark control system that has varying output levels. This first generation ESM system does not include a fuel control system. Fuel quality and consistency is the largest fluctuation with gaseous fuel engines. The next generation of engine controls use the same ECU, IPMD, and PDB hardware. But in 2006, the air fuel ratio, or AFR, fuel control system was added for some VHP and all 275 GL engines. Visually, identifying factors for ESM with AFR revolve around the addition of a stepper motor mounted to each main fuel regulator. With the use of an oxygen sensor for each bank of cylinders, the fuel system adjusted to a best emissions setting. In the ESP software, these systems can be identified as the only units with the added F6 and F8 tabs. These engines are referred to as ESM with AFR control. After the success of the ESM with AFR system, the Lean Burn Only 275 family was changed to use the NOx-based exhaust sensor. The model changed to a 275GL+, plus, with the plus identifying the NOx-based fuel system. These engines can be identified with the same white ECU and IPMD, but here we see an updated PDB that uses solid-state circuitry and identifying lights for the circuits. The NOx-based fuel system required the addition of another module the NOx control module, or NCM. We see the first use of an integrated human-machine interface, or HMI, because the NCM needed a new interface for adjusting the stepper control system. The five-button HMI could read engine ECU faults and allow setting adjustments for the stepper control. These engines are referred to as ESM with NOx control. As engine emissions continued to be a driving force, stepper controls were not as good at maintaining the targets. This led to the development of fuel control valves, or FCVs, which are a controlled butterfly type valve. Incorporating these as well as a catalyst control system gave us the next generation with the introduction 
of the second generation of fuel control, or Air Fuel Ratio Control Generation 2, AFR2. This ESM with AFR2 engine can be identified with the ECU or engine control unit located here. This is the larger white ECU. We also see that as an AFR2 engine, we incorporate an ECM or emissions control module here. This particular engine also has the updated PDB. The PDB can be identified as the newer version for AFR2 engines. As we take the cover off, we can see that the fault light as well as the reset are located inside here. This engine also incorporates the thermocouple unit or smart thermocouple unit STU that's located on the back side of the plate here. ESM with AFR2 control systems use the same ECU and IPMD hardware. The PDB was updated to include a similar solid state control system, but with an added circuit fault identifier along with a circuit reset built into the box. For fuel and emissions control, an added emissions control module, or ECM, was added. This module is similar to the NCM, but does use different programming, so they are not interchangeable. The interface for this fuel and emission system is the 8-button HMI. These systems were used on some VHP as well as the VGF SE series of engines. The later developed VGF SE and VHP P9394 GSI engines using ESM with AFR2 also have a smart thermocouple unit or STU that collects temperature information from the individual exhaust and main bearing thermocouples. ESM with AFR2 was good from a functionality perspective, but it was somewhat limited in diagnostics capability and ease of user interface. That led to the 2016 introduction of a new generation of controls with ESM2. ESM2 carries over no control hardware from previous generations, including the actuators. As we look at our ESM2 engine here, tucked in behind the throttle and the carburetor, we're going to find the IPMD2 module as well as our smaller black ECU. Now this is going to be located on the right bank of the engine. How do we identify that? We stand from the back or the flywheel side of the engine and as we look forward we identify the left versus the right. So in this case we are looking on the right bank of the engine. We look for the power distribution box closest to R1, or the right bank number one furthest forward cylinder. ESM2 engines are identified by the smaller black ECU. The PDB is a smaller hinged assembly that has a solid state module, but it does not have the lights as used on ESM engines because all diagnostics and fault indication are visible on the touchscreen HMI. The HMI is interchangeable between the 12, 15, or 19 inch screens, with the 12 being the most common. All ESM2 engines utilize an STU for thermocouple monitoring. 16 cylinder 275 and VHP engines use two modules linked together to meet the required sensor capacity. ESM2 controlled engines are found on 2017 and later production VHP and 2020 and later production 275 GL pluses. Waksha 275 GL plus engines also use the latest ESM2 platform with an updated NOx fuel control system. On the left bank, the power distribution box or PDB and STU can be seen. The ECU and IPMD2 modules are located on the right bank. This system boasts improved response and stability from updated throttle, wastegate, and bypass actuators and related software. The fuel system uses an updated NOx sensor and stepper control with ease of use with the touchscreen HMI. The ESM2 system incorporates multi-year trending through graphing and analysis. Many previous vintage engines are currently being upgraded to the new ESM2 control 
So as referenced before, don't rely on the engine tag to discover which control system is in use. Understanding which generation of control is on your engine will guide you to a better understanding of the correct interface software. ESM engines will use the ESP software. In the past, CDs with this software were included when the engine was purchased. If it is still available, this disk may still be used. Otherwise, the software can be downloaded from the INEO Waukesha Gas Engine Customer Portal listed here. ESM2 engines can use the HMI for nearly all functions, including engine settings adjustments, graphing views and trending, operation and maintenance manual viewing, and e-help troubleshooting. Downloads of data or reports and setup of additional user profiles requires use of software that can be downloaded from this website. This video is a general overview of the control systems supplied by Waukesha Gas Engines. If the controls on your engine do not match, then some or all components may have been supplied by aftermarket vendors. So what we have here is a Series 4 VHP engine but it no longer has the ESM controls that it was born with. So if you do need some help troubleshooting an engine like this, you would want to go back to the manufacturer of this particular control system. You may also contact us here at Waukesha Engine so that we can let you know what control systems we could incorporate that give you the latest and greatest through our conversions, modifications, and upgrades group. Please work directly with those vendors for a model identification or inquire with your Waukesha Engine solution provider for updates and upgrades that can benefit your engine.